record. I'm hitting it. We're two minutes late. It's 1032. Everything seems to be a go for Schnoon the Machine episode 52. Um, no clips today because we'll talk about it in a moment. No clips today. Uh, starting the show now. <laughs> show everybody good morning and welcome to stream the machine episode 52 um no no cl- okay so uh, first of all i'm jake mercer i'm your host uh, welcome to the show with me as always is tony de palma Han. to my here we go to my this area right here because we're next to each other you, other way am i pointing the right way nope you're pointing so i'm that way yeah now we're we're touching oh we can do that now. That's a great <laughs> idea. I need to get a sound clip for a clap now because now we can actually like <laughs> high five. Um, with me as always is Tony DePalma. Tony, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Much better now that we've changed our format. Um, I've been wanting to do that for so long. <laughs> we've been waiting. You'd like it. <laughs> now yeah. we can. Um, all right. So address a few things here before we jump into the show notes. No clips in front of the show this morning or in the middle, actually. It's getting really hard for me to find stuff that i deem to be like hilarious and good to throw on the show like not for content content we're always good because we we kind of wing that ourselves but for like catching good like news clips and stuff we've done a year worth of stuff and it's like a hundred ish clips approximately because we've done about two clips before the show or during each show and i'm starting to run out of good material at the moment um, what I need to do is I, I need to find like another avenue. Like for a while, once I found out news clips were great, I was like, sweet. And I always was getting news clips. I need <laughs> to find my next thing that I can easily YouTube and figure it out. I did uh, old commercials for a while, but now I kind of don't want to like, you know, run that one dry. Um, I need to find the yeah. next bit and the next thing that's going to be <laughs> funny that I can uh, pull for the show. So that's why we don't have any things today nothing met the standards <clears throat> and i was hoping everyone would be understanding about that um as you can see we're doing a little new uh video layout here um because i saw and haven't created any kind of background or anything for the show um and so instead of having all that weird black space uh ross said well, how about you guys just uh put your videos next to each other which is a great idea so now <laughs> now we've uh, got a little widescreen format going on and um it looks good. It looks good. And we can pretend that we're high-fiving and we're not that far away. Um, oh, wait. Here we go again. Ouch. <laughs> it's difficult. We'll it it's, it's harder. First day. Yeah, we'll, we'll try. Um, <laughs> it is what you sound like, Ross. Uh, all right. Well, first of all, give us reviews on iTunes. <laughs> Um, good or bad, we always like to hear stuff about us. Uh, go ahead and leave comments on the, the show post as well on the website or even on the Facebook. Let us know how we're doing and uh, help us get the show out there um, just by your your good and kind words. If you have bad words for us, that doesn't really help help to get the show out there, but it does help us uh, improve the show. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. I don't know if you knew that, Tony. I did. <laughs> Um, I didn't until about this week when my mother sent me a text and said, I have a great mother's gift idea. I said, oh, okay. What would that be? And she goes, could you not swear for the entire month of May? (laughs) Well, yeah, I'll give it a try. So, um, (laughs) I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, stream the machine is going to be G rated this month. Um, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Maybe not content wise, but it'll be G rated as far as language goes. For you, yeah, for me. <laughs> Tony is Tony and Ross are in the clear. They can pretty much say whatever they want. But uh... Uh, I really wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, well, whatever. It, it's whatever. It, it's a uh, cursing is, is a very 
I don't know, it's not a great thing. You don't really use it in polite speech or anything like that. I don't use it in polite speech. At least I try not to. Um, but, uh... Yeah, see, Michael says he's going to hold me down at work now. He's going to hold me to it that uh, I don't actually curse. So, thanks, Mom. I appreciate it. Um, it's... It's something I do just because I think I get lazy. And a lot of people get that way. They're like, I'd rather not use this other descriptive word, so I'm going to say that effing whatever. And so you just yeah. drop it's attached that. attach it to an adjective and it becomes way worse right? way and, better. And it's just it's just kind of lazy speech. And sometimes I use it to sort of, you know, show like anger. like Because I, I don't use it. I, I, I might use it more than most people, but the other reason I don't, I've, I, I've never had a huge problem with cursing is because it's, it's just a word. It's a word that somebody yeah. decided that someone said, Jesus didn't yeah. say this, by the way, Jesus didn't say this. Nobody said, uh, well, I can't even like give examples cause I can't say them, but they, they, these words were basically picked out because they had a certain meaning or had gained a certain meaning over time. And someone said, you know what? That word is not good. And they decided that, that, that that's just the way it was. Z- some dudes decided. So if if one day dog somehow evolves into some kind of How like, dare you? I know. The, On the show. It is. Respect it your is mother's wishes. Totally. Jay. I know. I apologize, Mom, for that one. Um, <laughs> it is completely possible that a word that is okay for us right now could eventually become a, a, a curse word. Like say. 500 yeah 500 years in the future or whatever 100 years just because it gets it it gets chosen the word bay in 500 years i hope we don't either swag i hope we stop now Um. (laughs) thought i do Um, like goat goat i don't know if it's pronounced go but it's like g-o-a-t greatest of all time oh i've never even uh i was like i was like because people are like derrick rose is goat i was like he's a he's a goat (laughs) This is the first I mean, time I've ever heard of that. I mean, I've heard of goats. I don't think he looks like a goat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like Urban Dictionary, and I was like, oh, that makes a little more sense. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know, whatever. But I will respect my, my mother's wishes, and um, in, in the current day and age, some words just hold a bit of weight for some people more than others, and that's completely fine. Um, we live in a society, so I will attempt to be uh, classy in a way. Um, moving on Mother's Day be <laughs> nice to your mothers <laughs> don't swear get them things um, news articles weird news articles here's what I'm going to start doing from now on because this week um, my mother uh, my mother sent me this article and she said hey um, here check this out this is cool and I looked at it and I go wow that is great for our weird news and it it occurred to me, and I don't know why it hasn't occurred to me prior to this. You, the listeners, should be sending in some of our weird news articles. People who listen into the show, if you see, it's really hard not to curse. I'm just gonna say it right now. There's been a few times where I just want to be <laughs> like, ah, oh, that's some weird sh right there, and just <laughs> um, <laughs> send in. If you're if you're throughout the week, just reading an article and you see some kind of dumb thing like oh yeah but a raccoon shoots a man in the face like send it to us i want to see it i want to read about a raccoon shooting a man in the face that's that sounds... rocket raccoon <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's right i neglected to see that movie that's my own fault um <laughs> so send us in your your news articles i may not pick three listener picked articles every week or four or however many but um because i think i'm actually going to change our weird news articles to about three now because we we end up skipping over more often than not, but raccoon shoots you in the face. <laughs> oh wait, here wait. Let me get my head over. Ah, <laughs> <there we> <laughs> um. So yeah, it's uh, just send it, send in stuff. Send it into uh, stream the machine uh, at gmail dot com. Send it to us. Uh, say hey, you know whatever. Type in weird news article for the subject, and um, we'll know exactly what to do with it. And we will include it on the show if possible. So this week we actually have a user submitted news article. Um, you just last... realized you can cut your workload down if you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get people to send in music, so I don't have to do that anymore. And then now I'm like, all right, well, can't do the music. I guess we'll work work on news articles. <laughs> Um, it will be like, who wants to be? A, who wants to be the host this week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, you send me- <laughs> submit your profile. <laughs> you can host this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh boy. What well, weird? Well, maybe not weirdly enough. Weird news articles are the easiest thing to grab. The hardest thing for me to grab every week, every week is the actual news because. I want to find something that will be interesting or at least fun or something that we can talk about. You know, that's going to offer. And we got, we've got two uh, decent articles for us uh, this week. But, like, you know, unless there's, you know, the new Apple Watch or whatever, which that actually did, uh, I believe, come out um, recently. Or at least I saw some reviews for it, so I assumed it came out. But, you know, unless there's something right brand new on the horizon to discuss... Um, Oftentimes, you know, we may not always have great articles for it. So um, last update about the show. I am going to start uh, featuring artists um, basically but on an episode basis. So I thought about it last week as I played both of my buddy Casey's songs on the show. I thought, you know what? Sometimes we get some good music and we play one song in theirs and then it just never gets revisited. Um, sometimes we have returning customers, but oftentimes if I find a random artist, I'm like, all right, here we go. Done. Boom. And I try to find something else. I try to keep it varied. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to start, um, and I may not adhere to it every week, but I'm going to start doing what I, what I can to play two songs from one artist each episode. So like today, both of our songs will be from the same guy, from the same album. That way, if you hear it and you're like, you know what? That sounded pretty good. I wonder what else's music sounds like. Well, just stay to the end of the show. You'll hear more, and um, then you can and be like, listen right. to the full show. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll say, well, hey, you it's know neat. what? The, that was pretty good. Um, I've heard two songs of his. It sounds pretty good, and you'll go uh, check it out maybe. Um, if you hate both songs, or at least hate the first one, um, at least then you know that you can check out for the second one. You don't actually have to stay and listen to it. So <laughs> um, it, it, it helps on both sides. So I'm, I'm going to do my best to sort of get each artist – out there a, a, a little bit more give it a little bit more of a chance because sometimes one song isn't good enough there are certain bands that i love that i heard one song and didn't hear the rest for a long time and hated the band because i thought that one song was indicative of like the rest seven of the music dust. seven dust is my number one example is i hated like one or two singles and i was like awful awful band and i <laughs> heard more and was like oh my gosh these guys are amazing so um, that's like our first i'm pretty sure our first conversation me and you ever had because you put the little bulletin up in the mu- in the break room at work, and I started talking to you about music and stuff, and I asked you about Seven Dust, and you're like, I, I hate him. I hate, I did. I hate, I hate him. I was like, this seems like the music that he would love. It, it, I was it, like, it was. It, didn't, it just didn't give it a chance. So um, let that be a lesson to all you out there. Don't judge a don't judge a, a band by its radio singles. Um, I had one more thing I was going to say. I thought, oh. um... Keep on, uh, sorry, I'm totally, <laughs> like, derailed me there for a second. If you're listening to the show right now, tune in on Twitch, to, if, if you can. If you can't tune in on Twitch, then don't worry about it. But um, at least pull up, if you're listening on MixLR, pull up uh, Twitch in another program, hit pause on the video so you're not double streaming, and then just talk with us in the chat. We really want to hear from you. Um, they, they, unfortunately, right now, Twitch is the only place where we really have a group chat going on. Um, so join the rest of us in the Twitch chat room. Um, even if you have to listen on MixLR, just mute the, the podcast that way you don't hear us twice. Um, but if uh, everything does work on Twitch, I recommend going over there so you can actually watch our video as well. All right. Enough with the show crap. Holy – dude, it's been 14 minutes that we've been going at this. So what? luckily I won't have what? to repeat all of this stuff <clears throat> again. Um, so here we are. Earlier this week – all right. Um, I'm in here. I'm playing a game at night. And I'm kind of relaxing, and as I'm playing, I start hearing like a a drip, like a patter, or like a, you know, like a, like over here, and like over in the corner, and I'm like, uh, and it was like one of the first days we turned on our air conditioning, so I'm thinking to myself, eh, it's probably just pipes in the wall, right, you know, because for heat at least, you know, sometimes you'll hear like a, a popping of whatever going on because that's just, mm-hmm. it's just old stuff, you know, right? So we just something smells good. I don't know what Rachel's cooking, but it's smelling great. Um, it's, but, my, it's my new new deodorant. <laughs> that's another perk of having our videos side yep. by side. We cannot smell each other. <laughs> uh, it's the future, my friend. So I'm hearing the I'm hearing the drip, and I'm like, well, you know, it's it walls, right? It's stuff, and I'm I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, 
and like 10 minutes go by and I'm like, I still hear that dang drip. That's, that's not normal. So I turn on the light and I go over here and our ceiling, which at this point has now become a little brown, at least in this, like in one area, is dripping water onto the floor, like mm. really close to my computer stuff. Just steadily dripping water. I'm like, gosh darn it. Like, what the heck is this? I'm like, every couple of months I come on this show and I have something new to tell you about how my, how this house has incredible maintenance issues. And so I go tell Rachel and Rachel calls the landlord and they come out and they, they check it Thursday morning. It's two days after we called because apparently no one was in any incredible hurry. And they, they go up there and they find out that the landlord, apparently there's a drain for AC units. Okay. And I guess you... Okay. You connect the pipes the right way and then it, and it you know comes out outside of the house or something and he didn't connect the pipes the right way the last time he worked on the ac unit instead he just left it aimed like it at the ceiling and so the the while we were running the ac unit it's just like funneling all that water into the ceiling and that's Jeez. like, and I guess that it, and it's it's not a ton. I mean, it's just like condensation water, I imagine. Yeah. But it just started dripping through the thing, and so <clears throat> I guess we're gonna have to like wait for the ceiling to dry because I guess it's like kind of damp and you can't really like get in there and dry it real well. So they're like, oh, well, you know, give it a week and hope it'll dry, and then we'll try and fix it. So then I'm gonna have to like move all my crap out of the way, which sucks because I've got a lot of stuff set up here, um, and have them try and fix this because my landlord decided he didn't want to connect a pipe correctly before. So that was my week. It was kind of unfortunate, but um, on the bright side, uh, the Witcher three is coming out soon, um, which is going to probably be one of the best video games of all time. Um, (laughs) I've played the first two. There's no no big deal. Yeah. (laughs) The, the Witchers is as much a fan as I am of, of, Stuff like Metal Gear Solid and The Witcher. Um, I put The Witcher up on epic level with Metal Gear Solid. Although I'm not as crazy about The Witcher as I am about Metal Gear. And it's not because The Witcher is any less good. It's just because, for me, there's far more like dark fantasy, which is what The Witcher is, out there for me to enjoy. So I don't have to look just to The Witcher to get that. When I look for like... <laughs> good like or, you know whatever metal gear solid is like war slash espionage slash whatever it's like one of a kind and so that's why for for me metal gear solid kind of is you know the the one thing that's amazing and for the mm-hmm. witcher i go well no you've got the witcher you've got bloodborne you've got this and you've got all these other dark the dragon age you know you've got all these other dark fantasy games that are also really great so while the witcher probably will compare with the new metal gear um uh, it, it, the Metal Gear will still always take the cake for me. But in preparation, as I always do for almost any new game, um, I've decided to uh, to go back and start playing the old series. Um, so I, I started with the first one, and I'm a little bit into that one. I'll hopefully probably go to the second one. Um, I've got about 10 days, I think it is now, before the, second, or before the third one comes out. And um, so I've got 10 days to try and crush through two fairly large RPGs and... Uh, hope that i don't burn myself out enough that by the time the third one comes around that I'll, i won't be excited to play it so uh we'll see we'll see how that goes it's actually the whole series is actually based on a book um, or not sorry not based on a book but it's a continuance of, an, of a book series that's no longer being written so um the witcher where these old polish like I, I don't know if you call them novels but um it was uh written by this old polish dude and it was about the, these people, the witchers, that were basically monster hunters. And the things that make the thing that makes witchers um, particularly special is they've sort of <clears throat> um, imbibed themselves with um, mutations um, and through like alchemy and stuff that causes them to be sort of like um, what's the word? Like better than human. And so they used to be human, but you know now they can like. You know, they've got increased speed, increased strength. They, you know, they can drink these potions and, like, let them see them, see in the dark. And it's, like, heavy on, like, sort of like a mutated human almost. Um, oh. And um, so that that's the that, – that, that was what these books were based on. So they get to the end of the book series. Boom. <clears throat> and I guess the company who makes the games start, just basically go, um, well – 
uh, this book series is awesome. Let's make a game series on it. And so they, I don't know if it happens at the end of the book or not, but they smash the main character with amnesia and then start the game series. And so <laughs> the game series essentially is him being like, I don't, I don't remember any of you. I don't know how any of this happened. I, who am I? And you just play as this character and kind of learn it all with them. Um, it, uh, cool. it works well. That's for sure. Um, but uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm going through them, and I'm excited now. Um, I have the first. I had the first one and two because I think the winter sale or the summer sale one time mm-hmm. they were like six bucks for the two of them. So it's like sure. But yeah, I there, it's, to it's mad cheap right now. So right now the first game is two dollars, and I think the second game is like three bucks. Um, yeah, and it's um, the first game is good. Um, it's what I would call like a. A diamond in the rough. It's got a very mm-hmm. good story. It's got very good characters, but technically, it's it's a little squirrely at times. Um, but it's good if you can sort of get into it. Now they made so much money from that game that the second one is out of the park amazing. It's so much. It's so much more polished. It plays a lot better. It's just it's a huge upgrade to the series, which is why I think the third one will just destroy every game that's ever been released. I think the third one will. And maybe my hopes are just incredibly high, but um, I feel like it, it has the potential to really set the to set the bar like it hasn't been set before. <clears throat> um, switching gears a little bit here, before the show we talked about. Um, we'll try and keep this a little bit short. Maybe we'll end up skipping some weird new stuff today. I'll at least read the article that got submitted to us. Um, I'm actually, a page not found probably won't take too long. Anyways, got a lot to talk about in our intro today. Uh, you have you heard about this the the recent drama stuff with uh, Joss Whedon? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I won't touch on it incredibly long because I think we have something that kind of ties into it a little bit later, at le- least tangentially. Um, so Joss Whedon he is the uh, uh, director for the Avengers films. Um, he recently uh, he was done after he did Age of Ultron, so he basically was like, "All right, comes out, he's done, boom." Not associated with Marvel, at least to the best of my knowledge. Um. There was a lot of people, and I don't believe this is a spoiler for the film. You've seen Age of Ultron? Yes. Yeah, okay, so yeah, I figured. I haven't, but as I understand, at one point, um, Scarlett Johansson's character, uh, Black Widow, um, I guess they, they touch on the subject that she cannot conceive children. Is that correct? It is. Um, Bruce Banner, or is his name David Banner or Bruce Banner at this point? Bruce Banner. I, I, I don't know if it was... I think David Banner is a rapper. Well, so here's the thing. Originally, his name was Bruce, and then at one point they changed it for a while because, and trust me, this is true, they thought Bruce was a gay name. And so the, I believe it It was either David Banner or – he is also a rapper, yeah. but they, I, I think they changed it to something else right. for a short time period. Um, David Banner was the name of his father in the movie. Was that – let me see if I can find Bruce Banner as a gay name. I'm sorry if your name's Bruce out there. I, and I don't believe this, but... Uh, it looks like in the TV show, his name was David Banner. Okay. And maybe that was maybe that was why they did it. Um, yeah, I, I'm seeing a few posts here where it talks about <laughs> the connection between uh, Bruce and homosexuality, and that's just stupid. Whatever. <laughs> There's no gay names out there. Unless your name literally is gay, and that's it. It's just you're, you've, <laughs> then got, it's, you've got it's, a gay name. That's it. It's not actually homosexual. It's just gay. Um, <laughs> no, but okay. So, as I also understand it, um, Bruce Banner's character, uh, the Hulk, can also not um, contribute to uh, child conception. Correct. Yes. Okay. So they sort of, I believe, develop a, a romance in the film a little bit, and they their characters. I don't know if it's that they that Bruce can't, or if he's just like doesn't want to because he doesn't really know what's gonna like what can happen. Sure. Okay. Um, I mean, he's a giant angry rage monster. If the baby right. cries, and all of a sudden, just like oh, right. out in the crib. So effectively, we can say at least that he is essentially um, sterile because he's make he's he's put in a position mm-hmm. where. If he were to have kids, he wouldn't. It wouldn't be good. Or, you know, potentially it wouldn't be good. That's what the assumption is. Anyways, um, there's a lot of people that are kind of going, getting up in flames about this because 
they believe that having <clears throat> a female superheroes character, which female superheroes um, don't have a great representation in uh, at least movies. Yeah, it's, it, it, we have far more dudes. I mean, look at the Avengers. It's like ten dudes and one chick, you know, or you know, maybe maybe two, but it, there's not many. And um, so there's a lot of people that finally, get, you know, see Scarlett Johansson, see Black Widow, and go, "That's an awesome character." And then get angry that she's left with what they consider to be a stereotypical, um, I don't know if weakness it would be, would be the term. Um, and I don't want to say character flaw either, but they're upset that the thing that gets her down is the fact that she can't conceive children. And they say, well, why does and it have to be the fact that she can't conceive children? Because These people are just hating on it to hate on it. Like, I saw that movie and that, she, like, in that scene, there's like, she's, She's I'm saying how she can't have children, mm-hmm. and about all the stuff that happened. She's like, and I'm a monster too. Like, and people are saying like, oh, she's a monster because she can't have kids. <laughs> like, no, she's a monster because she's she was a hitman, right? And murdered a bunch of people. It's like that's what she's saying, right? Like she's not saying like, it's like they're not calling her a monster because she can't have kids. I was like, uh, it was... well, it all kind of ties into this idea of you know. Is it men portraying this stereotypical female in Hollywood? You, you finally give us a, a, a female hero that can kick ass, and what do you do? You make it. She can't have kids, and that's whatever. Well, on the other flip, on the flip side, people are saying, "Well, no. I mean, they, the reason it works is because Hulk also doesn't want to have kids slash can't have kids, and so because their characters start, you know, it gives them a connection point. You know, they both are in this position mm-hmm. where they're sort of unable to do this mutual thing." Well, then, and, and and all the while, people are, because of this, because of this, right? Because Joss Whedon, by the way, you know, I think he did help write uh, uh, the Avengers script. So I will say that he's part of uh, being as a writer. But they're, they're claiming that it's solely his fault. That he must be sexist or, you know, misogynist because he has now given this woman the inability to reproduce. And that is what men do to women. And I mean... It, <laughs> but I'm, okay, I'm trying not to like uh, get angry about it. Um, and this is all coming down on him. And no one thinks about the fact that well, Marvel produced the film, so they gave the okay, you know, or that there's a thousand other people he's working with on the set, so everyone sort of contributed to this. They think, well, Joss Ooh. Whedon's got he's got the biggest name on there, uh, must be his fault completely. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's I, I'm kind of. I'm kind of derailing at this point, and so I, I want to get back into the show and just kind of move forward. But I wanted to bring it up because a lot of people were thinking that, you know, giving this character this this thing that, you know, can't reproduce was that this big, weird, sexist, like, slap to women's faces. And I, I don't believe that at all. Um, the fact that, you know, we talk about, well, uh, Bruce Banner also um, <clears throat> can't have children, and it's a connection point. And I saw people saw people and what got me incensed was I saw read an argument this week on Facebook and at one point a female said and I point out as a female because I wanted to, it's a female perspective and you, you can't really discuss feminism 100% truly unless you have a female there because as guys you know we talk about it with racism as, as dudes we just don't always get it so <clears throat> she made the point um, you know a guy said um, well, hey, you know, not being able to have children or bear children—that's that's like that's that's a gender a, a gender neutral thing. That's sh- oh boy, I about said a curse. <laughs> that's awful for both people. You know, it's it's not like oh you can't have kids. You know, and then oh this guy's uh, sterile and uh, that that affects him differently. Like it sucks for both people. That sucks. That sucks. That's a thing you can't do. That sucks. And uh, someone was like, uh, I beg to differ. I think it uh, hits women far harder than it hits men. I was like, how can you even make that claim? How can you make a claim? Yeah. I will say that on an on an individual to individual basis, sure, that is likely possible. I'm just like I'm sure there's someone out there who don't care that they can't have kids. Because they're like, oh, cool. Then that means I can have unhindered sex. Or, you know, whatever. Um, just because a dude can't have a kid doesn't mean that he hurts any less or any more for that matter than a woman who can't have a kid it was so infuriating to me that it was being taken into this argument of that that was a sexist thing to do say that a woman couldn't have a kid and in fact when they also talked about bruce banner not wanting to have children because of his condition 
it was Ooh. I don't know. It made me kind of angry, and like I said, we're we're kind of derailed at this point. But I did want to I wanted to stand up for Joss Whedon mostly at this point, and what I believe to be Kevin in the chat room makes a good point. <laughs> something I did want to discuss. Joss Whedon, his whole reputation is based off strong female characters. He created Buffy, who's yeah. a, the, one of the biggest girl badasses of all time. He created Dollhouse, which I haven't seen, but I'm sure Elisha Dushku is kicking. Oh, I said ass, didn't I? Dang it! I think he did. Oh no, I said it. I said it to you because I, I said badass. Sorry, mom. Um, I was talking about women. I got excited because <laughs> bad a women are awesome. Um, so <laughs> there's two, right? There's two. You've got Firefly, which has Gina Torres in the lead role, who is the the one who keeps um, Nathan Fillion's role in check. A, a, a woman, no less. You know, that's like keeping the the main protagonist in check because she's a bad A. And like everything he does, <laughs> it just blew my mind that they would call Joss Whedon sexist because yeah. everything he does, he has shown that women are just as crazy as men and are, are like just as just as useful but, and just as like powerful and just as great as characters. You don't have to have the the woman being the damsel in distress. You know, you can have the women saving the dudes all the time because the women are just as strong. They're just as ah. It made me so mad. It's it's so angry. It's so infuriating to me to have someone make a small claim like this and then claim that all Joss Whedon's work must be this anti-feminist uh, agenda. Oh yeah, let's just forget everything he's done before this to prove they don't know anything he's done before this they just know that he's big now for avengers and they're like oh let's attack this dude yeah it uh, i don't know sorry i you Uh, know what is is that actually kevin in the chat room i i have no idea i just said no you're kevin because that's like the line from hot rod (laughs) (laughs) no i have no idea i don't know if that is kevin uh maybe it's steven steven messaged me about the show this morning so i I have no idea. Mm. Both of them would be equal, equally likely to troll, I feel like. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for going on that tangent. I kind of got out of hand there. Um, just look it up. Look up and read some comments on this. Um, it is a thing. It is a weird argument about feminism and whatnot. And, you know, is it actually sexist to have, have given Black Widow character the inability to have kids? You know, whatever. Chime in in the chat room if you think so. Um Tell me, tell me about the mist, Tony. Well, have you seen the movie The Mist? I have. Um, I enjoyed it. I had never heard. I had no idea what it was about. Obviously, I knew there was a bunch of mist and some sketchy yeah. stuff. Is mm-hmm. it Stephen Stephen King, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. Or at least based on his book, yeah. And so I knew there was some sketchy stuff and all that. And I was with a buddy, and we were looking for a movie to watch, and you're like, let's, let's go try to find The Mist. So we went to a few stores and finally found it. Um, and it was just, like, a lot heavier mm-hmm. than I expected it to be. Like, it kind of put a damper on the rest of my day. So it's got a... Some of the next day. A very dark ending, right? Um, yes. The, and it's so, it's so good. The Okay, now here's it's this. it's, like, awful. The original... Frank Darabont, by the way, director of that film, who's done uh, first season of Walking Dead, um, Shawshank Redemption. Uh, I don't know what else he does. He does a lot of adaptations. It's like I read an article about him once um, and him basically saying that everyone thinks as a writer, as a director, that they have to come up with the, the, the new thing, the new big thing. But he was like, look at my career. All I've ever done is adapt things. And all of it's, like, critically acclaimed stuff. And so he was like, sometimes you just have to, you know, put a spin on something that already exists. Or tell it again, but tell it better. You know, he was like, you don't always have to be... The original concepts are the hardest things to work with because you don't know if they're going to work. If you come through and say, hey, let's do a Mad Max reboot with uh, Tom Hardy, they go, well, hey, you know what? Mad Max was cool before. Tom Hardy's a bad A. (laughs) Let's... Let's uh, try it. You know, like if you, if you, bad apple, yeah, a bad apple. There you go. Well, be your substitute. Um. So yeah, the the thing I was going to say though, the ending for the mist, the from like let's say the book or whatever is based on. If it was a short story, I don't remember. Um, I know for sure that that has to be Kevin in the chat room then, because I think he's the only one that yeah. is literary enough to to 
be a fan of Stephen I think, King. And, Kevin, I think I've heard, I think I've heard Kevin praise this movie before. Like, that literally, he's the only person I've ever heard talk about it. A lot of people don't like it because of the ending. Um, but uh, it, the ending is completely opposite in the original story. So I'm not going to yeah. get into too much detail, but you know how dark the ending I, is. Right? I can gather the opposite right. of that. It, yeah. is, it is not that dark in the original material. And everything kind of was like, hmm, here we are. You know, it's... it's. I'm trying to, like, mime this without giving it away. But everything doesn't happen that darkly. And they came to him, I guess... I don't know if it was the writer or the director or whatever. Came to Stephen King, I guess, while they were doing it. And were like, what do you think about this change? And he was like, oh, my God. I love this. <laughs> And so they changed it, and they did that for the for the the movie because he they thought it as Kevin uh, or pseudo Kevin or whoever it is in the chat said <laughs> um, he actually liked it better, and so he was like, "Let's do this. This is great." Um, I I hate the religious woman in it though, not because she's religious, oh. but because she's one of the religious fanatics, which I think even actual <laughs> religious people hate. <laughs> um, and they throw a can at her face one time, and it's like one of the greatest scenes. Okay, the dude. I forget his name, but the short little guy with glasses um, who works at the store was with the main oh, character. Is it like Abby? Is that his name or something like that? Or something like that. Um, but I don't, maybe I he's named Abby name. and something else. I think I know who he is. He's like a sh- little stocky dude, right? Yeah, short little dude with glasses, kind of quiet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's he was like my favorite person. He was just like. Ollie, that's it. Ollie, not Abby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he was my favorite. Just because he just... just He's a very nice he guy. Took care of, he took care of business yeah. in that movie. Just wanting the best for everybody. Yes, he's... Yeah, exactly. He is in Captain America. I see. He's got skulls like a sister. I've not seen Captain Stola? America. In Hunger Games. I, mm. I've only seen one Hunger Games. I, I cannot attest to either of those. But I trust you. I trust both of you. Um. All right. Well, let's move on here. We'll kind of move into some of this. We've already burned a, a, quite a bit of our show. That was our intro, and we're uh, we're forty five minutes into the show. <laughs> um. All right. Well, here's uh, here's this. Uh, here's this. Four oh four error. Page not found. We will uh. Discuss this relatively quickly. Uh, quickie? Quickly. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, I don't think we're <laughs> We don't know each other that well. Uh, NBC cancels Constantine, which I don't know if that was a surprise to anybody. Does it surprise you, Tony? Uh, not really. Um, I mean, they put it on like 10 p.m. on a Friday. Yeah, so t- time oh. slot, especially for uh, that. So, well, so, so two things. Either one, no one's awake watching TV at that point if it's, it's going to be toward, towards the later. Or... They're not at home at all, and they're not watching TV. So either way, yeah. it's like kind of a poor slot to put it on. Second of all, Constantine has very dark source material. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, one of his biggest things that sort of makes him the Constantine character is he's a chain smoker. And he's like fighting to protect people and whatever, but I hate myself, so I'm always smoking and getting lung cancer. And that, that's his thing, right? They didn't allow him to smoke in the show because it's like – what uh, I, I don't know what to call the regular networks. It's not basic cable. It's um, I don't know whatever NBC is. But NBC was like, no, we're not going to television. Sure. Um, and so they're like, we're not going to do that time. because kids watch that stuff, and you know we don't want to have this sort of role model smoking, chain smoking on TV. And I get that part. I understand that. But then don't put Constantine on NBC. That's like one of his things. How are you going to take away? Ah, I yeah. don't know. And so it just seemed it's it's dark source material. He's dealing with demons and all this other weird stuff. And they're like, ah, oh, that'll be a great show. Uh, let's not put it on uh, HBO or Showtime, though. Um, you know, I mean, look at and I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard a lot about it. Look at Daredevil. Marvel is notorious for doing PG to PG thirteen level stuff. And from what I understand, Daredevil is far above the PG thirteen level um, for violence and everything like that. And they went to Netflix to do it. Why? Because I mean, look at Sh- Agents of Shield, and what do they got? Uh, Agent Carter now, um, yeah, and some other things that are all on the the prime time television slots. 
Um, but they work because their their source material works. And then you look at Daredevil, and they went straight to Netflix, where they can get away with the things that they're going to do. And that's why they did it because they're smart. They're smart. Daredevil's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I really need to watch it. Um, putting Constantine on NBC was such a dumb thing for them to try. I feel like it was an incredible waste of yeah. money and time for people because there was potential for Constantine to be something. And I don't think that they took good enough advantage of it. I, I feel like they essentially were like, we really want to do this, but we don't have the ability to, you know, either put it on uh, freaking Netflix or Showtime or HBO or whatever. Like, I don't know why they didn't do it. Maybe NBC offered them so much money, but then was like, all right, well, now that we've bought it, uh, no smoking, no cursing. Uh, you can't show a demon's horns because that offends people. And, you know, I mean, like, I don't know if that was true, but um, <laughs> you, just, you just can't be nearly as graphic. Even the action can't be yeah. that crazy. And so it's just... I don't know. I, 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 it does not surprise me in the least. Now, there was a lot of other shows canceled as well. Not uh, not all like Constantine. A lot of them were sitcoms. Um, but the fact that Constantine is now gone just is kind of like it was a matter Did of time. I, I hadn't seen it. No, I watched a trailer for it and mm. I laughed because it, it made it seem like it was going to be dark. And I remember, I remember my nephew sent it to me. And he said, dude, this looks like it's going to be awesome. And I go, okay, watch that trailer and tell me whether or not you think that could be done with like a PG rating. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, they're playing it on NBC. I was like, there's no way it's going to be half as dark as what that trailer implies. Yeah. And he was like, oh, crap. <laughs> and I was like, that's just it. Like, that's just it. As they they wanted to show, like, yeah, Constantine, he's battling with his demons and he's got he's got actual demons he's fighting and but none of that's going to be like as crazy as they they make it out to be because they can't do it. They can't do it on NBC. I don't know why they tried. Um, but no, I yeah, didn't I watch think, it. I saw the first three episodes and I was like, it has potential, but they're just it's yeah, yeah. Um, I it's just, one of the main reasons I actually great. haven't watched uh, Gotham um, because I'm not exactly sure what to expect from that either. How how far did you get in the Arrow? Uh, halfway. Did you give up. I, I kind of did only because there's so many other different shows that I had been trying to watch. Um, mm -hmm. I only got, I think, seven or eight episodes in. Um, oh, Arrow yeah. was passable for me, at least in the first season. It was entertaining, but I was not in love with it. Um, I, yeah, I had a I good time with it, but I didn't, didn't love it. So you would like sec season two. You would hate season three. Probably. <laughs> I, 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 like, it's, it's a bummer. I've only, heard that I, three gets kind of back to the, the drama part. Like, I... People, I don't know, but with Flash is doing is really good, mm -hmm. and it's on the same network, with the same writers. Um, I th it honestly, it seems like the people, the good writers for Arrow, just kind of jump ship to start right this first <laughs> right, well, season uh, of Flash. Let's do this new thing because yeah, because it's like yeah, I'm only watching it just because. Well, you've committed in for that long, might as well. Yeah. Um. So yeah, speaking of uh, superheroes, though, uh, last week we talked about Deadshot and the dumb little... I don't think we talked about the new costume, right? No, we haven't. Okay, so we talked about the dumb freaking pimp suit that Will Smith was wearing. <laughs> um, now they've got the new Deadshot costume, which I don't believe is included in this link, but the link does have the suicide cast reveal. So they showed... Will Smith posted his new Deadshot, um, him like an actual Deadshot outfit. Um <laughs> Looks a, looks a lot better. Number one thing that I think um, is interesting, and I don't know what the deal is yet, and a lot of people have sort of pointed this out. Okay, Deadshot's whole thing is he shoots people from crazy angles and whatever. Like, he can do whatever. Like, if there's a dude on my street right now, like, at a point where, like, I couldn't aim a gun out and shoot him, Deadshot, if I was Deadshot, could shoot up, hit a bird, make it bounce off the bird, and hit a brick wall over there, and then come back and hit the garbage can, and then shoot the guy in the back of the neck and s s just sever his spinal column in half. Yep. And not, obviously not at the neck because that's not where your spinal column is in half. Um, but he just does these crazy trick shots, right? And he has, like, a bionic eye because that's, I don't know, that's just what he has. I don't know if he lost it, but he's got a bionic eye, and it's on his right eye, at least in the comics. Because I guess that's the eye that he uses. It's like, his, it's like his scope. Right. Basically for his gun. And so he uses it with a right hand grip. Well, noticeably in the Will Smith dead shot uh, photo, 
He's got it on his left eye. Yeah. But he still oh, has a right use. hand grip. So there's a little bit of, you know, what, what's, how, you know, is it just a mistake? Did they put it on the wrong eye that day? Does he aim with his left eye? Like, I don't, I haven't really shot a lot of guns. I don't know if there's a, a, a if, if you people use their left eye a lot. Um, oh, it just, be a good question for Ross. Yeah, Ross, answer in. If you're right handed, if you're shooting right handed, right hand on the trigger, which eye is the most optimal to use, and which eye, I guess, was the one? I'm assuming it's the right, but I guess I don't. I don't know. I don't shoot. Guns. I mean, most people just use the same eye, whatever eye they're dominant on. Right. Yes. Um. So I don't know. It, it is. It is a little interesting, but. Uh, but still, the whole outfit, oh, the whole great. ensemble, it looks great. Yeah, it, it does. Um, that's just a, a small qualm. Um, they also released the Suicide Squad cast photo. Um, which is an in- interesting ragtag group of people. Um, sort of loving the Harley Quinn thing because not only is Margot Robbie a babe and a half, um, Harley Quinn's also a babe and a half. And so mixing two babes and a half and you get, a uh, what, three babes? So essentially Harley Quinn and Margot Robbie and Suicide Squad is going to be the equivalent of three hot chicks. Um, I got, let's see. I'm going from left to right. Okay. It's- Slipknot, Captain Boomerang, Enchantress, Rick Flag, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Killer Croc, El Diablo, and then Crouch Down as Katana. Yeah, I mean, good work because I, I wouldn't have had a clue. I could have told you, I could have told you Deadshot, <laughs> Killer Croc, and uh, Harley Quinn. Um, I didn't know the others. I'd heard the names, but um, I didn't, wasn't mm. actually all that familiar with them. So. Um, so, okay, Ross here says in the chat, Dominant Eye, if you're shooting a rifle with uh, your right hand, um, you cannot use your left eye. So it looks yeah. like Deadshot um, will be using the eye that a trained uh, gunsman, Ross Bays, says you cannot be using. So we'll see well, what I mean, Deadshot has to say about that. Maybe he uses his right eye to look down the scope and his left eye to kind of like figure out where he's going to bounce stuff out. I don't know. That's possible. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll what have they to do. wait to see what the movie actually says. So uh, go check that out. Go look up Suicide Squad. Uh, it's really the biggest reveal that they've had yet for the movie coming up. Uh, this DC Comics movie. Um, let's do some uh, in other news here and move right ahead. And do it. Get Ross on uh, here pretty soon. Um. Oh wait a second. We're not doing as bad on time as I thought. It says here we've been running for almost an hour, but that's untrue because we started twelve minutes from from now into the future. So it must have been counting when I hit the stream and not when I hit the record button. So we must have been streaming about fifteen minutes before I hit the record button. Anyway, sorry. A little update for everybody there. Um. <laughs> here we go. This just in. In other news, in other news, whatever is, is has been cooked downstairs smells amazing. Still, I'm like, it almost smells like potatoes, but there's no way she made potatoes this early. Oh, it does smell good. I want it. I want it. Um, woman fights a legal battle to get pregnant with her own grandchild. What? Thought, <laughs> thought this would be a good one to bring up. Um, a U.S. woman is waging a, uh, a court battle to gain custody of her late daughter's eggs from Britain so she can become pregnant with her own grandchild. The 59-year-old woman, identified only as Mrs. M, is asking Justice Duncan Oosley to overturn a t- 2014 ruling from the British Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority's Statutory Approvals Committee which last year refused to allow women to have her daughter's eggs taken out of storage. Mrs. M's daughter uh, had her eggs frozen at IVF Hammersmith in London after being diagnosed with bowel cancer in 2008. But the HFEA said that she did not fill out a document detailing what her wishes uh, for prior eggs for eggs sorry for eggs prior to her death in 2011. Um, the High Court heard the mother is seeking to have the eggs shipped to New York, where a fertility crin- clinic clinic. <laughs> has agreed to help her have the eggs fertilized by a sperm donor and implanted in her womb. Uh, The court heard Mrs. M and her husband request anonymity to protect the privacy of a yet unborn child. Uh, The couple said the daughter 
uh, would be devastated to learn her eggs could not be used. I've never heard of a surrogacy case involving a mother and her dead daughter's eggs. It's, I mean, it's kind of tragic. It shouldn't be laughing at it, but that's a, a sort of a funny thing to say. Um, said fertility expert Dr. Mohamed Taranisi of the ARGC Clinic in London. It's fair to say that this may be a world first. Um, okay, so let's let's take a look at this for a moment. It is not her eggs, and it would not be a relation's sperm, the father's sperm, or anything like that. She literally would yeah. just be a surrogate mother for her daughter's uh, child. I'm going to say it's like, still a little weird. A little weird. It makes sense. I know. Like, I kind of get where she's coming from. It's, a little, it's still very weird. <laughs> like, people are going to be like, oh, you're having another kid? And they're like, I'm having a grandkid. <laughs> yep, like, I'm uh... what? Carrying my daughter's child just say, in there. Long story. Um, like, I mean, okay, is the deceased middle generation this, the mom that's deceased? Is the husband like was she married? Is there a ma- like who the the mom? Are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, the daughter. I didn't say. She, the da- her, okay, her, the daughter. Her, her daughter could have been twenty five year old. 25 years old, unmarried, and just had eggs. It says here she just had eggs taken out for storage when she found out she had bowel cancer. Like, so it doesn't say her age, doesn't say if she had anybody else. <clears throat> it's like, I mean, having essentially you're raising that grandkid as your kid. Mm-hmm. And how old is Mrs. Like the 59. 59. So 60 years old than, like, your, than your child essentially yeah so like by the time she's like, gonna die be dead, but years. before that person by like you gotta raise this child yeah and you could be dead by the time it graduates high school yep i don't know it seems it seems weird because there definitely are uh implications as far as uh caretaking and um i just i don't know i don't i don't know she, my de- my daughter would be devastated if she found out her age could be used yeah but would she want to know that her kid was brought into the world with 60 year old parents and you know I don't know I don't know not that not that being old is bad being old is totally cool but um, can't wait to be old whatever chime in on that one figure out let us know how how weird that is um, this article submitted by uh, my one and only mother um, who fortunately is not carrying my grandchildren um, woman spreads mouse feces on a co-worker's chair no jail time given uh, this is from uh, Virginia so uh, repping, uh, repping the home state right now um, there you go. a former Virginia lab worker was pleaded guilty to spreading contaminated feces on a co-worker's uh, computer oh wait sorry not mouse feces my bad I, <laughs> I read that article wrong um when I typed it up, I was like, feces on mouse? No, there's no, it must have been mouse feces. Um, sp- spreaded contaminated feces on a co worker's computer mouse and desk chair. Uh, but she won't see any jail time. Contaminated, by the way. Uh, the Winchester Star reports uh, that 31 year old Andrea Edwards of Stevens City was given a two year sentence uh, Tuesday with, oh, okay, uh, with time suspended. That means Edwards won't serve uh, jail time. According to the criminal complaint, Edwards obtained a stool sample from a patient she had tested in the lab. This is just gross. It had tested positive for a type of bacteria known to cause infection, diarrhea, stomach pain, and death. The complaint says she took the sample from the lab to the office area and put it on the co-worker's mouse and chair. Edwards will spend the next year on a supervised probation. I feel like some jail time should have been warranted. Because what they're essentially doing is saying... What you did was bad. It's worth two years, but we're going to go ahead and suspend it, put you on probation, let you get back to work. Like, what? That's <laughs> crazy. I don't even... Uh... Well, I mean, at least now I know what I can get away with in Virginia. When I'm upset yeah. and I just want to spread a handful of my last night's dinner onto somebody else's <laughs> mouse desk. <laughs> Desk chair. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and continue. There's not much to say about that one. It's just it's, it's just outrageous. Um, 
Today's just all sorts of WTF moments. Um, Nebraska woman suing all homosexuals on behalf of God. Hmm. Uh, Someone's got to do it. It's true. Someone has to take care of them. Uh, A Nebraska woman filed a seven-page handwritten court uh, court brief detailing her lawsuit against all homosexuals on behalf of God and his son, Jesus Christ. Sylvia Driscoll, excuse me, 66, of Auburn, uh, filed a federal lawsuit Friday in Omaha asking for a federal judge to rule on whether or not homosexuality is a sin. Um, Which is weird that you would ask a court or a state official to... No, a federal official. So a government official, like a, 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 a I guess a federal official, um, to comment something religiously charged because that is like the one thing that all government is not supposed to do is get particularly religious. That's what churches should say. Um, not that that always happens, but it, 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 it's like the foundation of what, we, you know, quote unquote, have started the country on here. Um, Driscoll's seven page court brief, which is entirely handwritten. Uh, describes the woman as an ambassador for plaintiffs, God, and his son, Jesus Christ. The defendants listed in the lawsuit are homosexuals, <laughs> noting the group uses the alias gay. <laughs> <laughs> the brief cites several Bible verses and argues that homosexuality is a sin and that uh, they, that that they, the homosexuals, know it is a sin to live a life of homosexuality. Why else could they have been hiding in the closet? Driscoll site. Why else could they have been hiding in the closet? What a dumb. Why else do you hide anything? Because you know that crazies like this are going to come out and just chastise you. And sue you. Um, Driscoll cited the biblical destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah um, as evidence of God's taste for immoral behavior. I never thought that I would see a day when our great nation, um, in which our great nation or our own great state of Nebraska would come, become so compliant with the complicity. Oh, excuse me, I'm not tired, I promise. Um, complicity of some people's lewd behavior, just Driscoll wrote. Uh, why are judges passing laws so sinners can break religious and moral laws? Um, will all the judges of this nation please stand up? No, I'm kidding. Will all the judges of this nation judge God to be a liar? Um, of course, and of course, she's representing herself in the lawsuit. Oh, yeah. um, has no professional lawyer. Eh. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't. I don't even know. I'm, you know, what? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, and I try not to get too political on the show. And um, I'm going to try and keep this fairly non-political, um, or at least not like condemning in any way. Um, I try not to enforce uh, certain opinions on the show, just because I don't want to. I don't want to clash with listeners, you know. And it's not me like saying like, "Oh, I'm just too afraid of doing it." I just don't want to, you know. There, there was a—I I don't remember the exact saying, but as, as a as a public icon, which we are not by any means, but as a public icon, they say never never mention your political your political preference because you'll lose half your audience. Because you're going to find out that sooner or later, the one thing that you know, like they've all this time when you were being silent, they thought, oh, he probably agrees with me, or you know, just it was in the gray area, so they they didn't hate you. Um, I'm going to say up front, though, that I've never, I've, I've never been in, uh, in support of discriminating against homosexuality in any way. Yeah. Um, I think it's an absolutely ridiculous thing. I think I actually posted something about it yesterday, and I'm not as well versed on the Bible as I probably should be. But I, po- I posted something about it yesterday, uh, you know, that was showing that, um, at least uh, according to the sources of the article, that there's actually no mention of homosexuality from Jesus himself in the Bible. Um, a lot of it comes from other people that. Or you know, human that may have had an opinion, an outdated opinion um, now, but an opinion back then. You know, by the way, because at one point we thought uh, it's all having, Old Testament stuff, right? At one point, we thought it was cool to have other other human beings as slaves. I'm just going to put that out there. That was only a couple hundred years ago. So and you could beat them, and if you beat them and they died, there'd be repercussions. But if you beat them and they died like two days later, you're in the clear, right? So. We think that that notion was crazy 200 years or 300, 400 years ago, right? We think that's crazy. Well, what about 2,000 years ago when we're like, oh, homosexuality is a, is a sin, you know, according to this? You're going to tell me that whatever law they created 2,000 some years ago, you know, where women had zero rights and anyone who wasn't white had zero rights, you're going to tell me all that crap is 
something that we should really be adhering to today. <laughs> I mean, it's a new age, man. It's a new age. And uh, it, it, it really infuriates me. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it straight up. I'm not... People can not like gay poop if they want. That's totally fine. I, I'm you, you can have your beliefs, and that's cool. But um, I just get frustrated about people who actively are, like, trying to ruin it for, for people that are gay. Or, you know, who are like, they can't get married. That ruins... That, that belittles my marriage. If your marriage is so, like, teeter-totter, like, on the edge because of some gay dude or woman getting married... You've already got a crappy marriage. A gay person yeah, like, getting married should not ruin the sanctity of your marriage or anything like that. How like does that the, guy... <sighs> it's so like dumb. Some, How does that guy people, get married devalue yours at all or make yours any better? It doesn't. It doesn't involve you. That's them. Yeah. Like, <sighs> there's people who think marriage is a ceremony. And to some people, marriage is a ceremony. Like, and then there's other marriages... A legal document. Right. For Texas. <laughs> like, who cares? Yeah. It's, uh, like, it, it, it really kills me. So I, I just wanted to, to, to state my opinion up front. And, you know, if there's listeners who disagree with me, cool. Let's talk about it in a private chat, not on the show. I shouldn't have brought it up in the first place, but I just wanted to say that this kind of stuff is the one thing, one of the one things. I'll stand up against um, misogyny, you know, uh, uh, for, so basically in support of uh, women's rights, I'll stand up for equal, uh, for against racism. And I will stand up against um, homo- homophobism. I don't, I know, I don't know what you call it. Homophobia. There we go. God, I'm a moron. I will stand up against homophobia. Those are the three things that I that I won't just go like, well, you know, okay, and just stay silent about. Those are three things I don't like, and um, I'm okay with saying it. And unfortunately, if that clashes with anybody listening, um, I apologize. Hopefully, you can still enjoy the show, and hopefully, we'll still be entertaining. Um, all right, on to our next segment now. Uh, so we have something here. Let me see if I can find it. I forgot to pull it for the show, but Ross sent us a little, uh, a little thing since we don't have an intro for um, our Would You Rather. Mm-hmm. We'll just do a couple of these and we'll switch over to our song. So here we go. I'm going to see if I can play this here. Oh, hey, good. Cool. Let me find this. I'm doing it. I'm grabbing it for the show. All right, here we go. Hopefully this is loud enough. This is Ross's Would You Rather uh, theme he made for us. Would you rather? Oh, God. Would you rather? I'm not sure who in like the middle of the beginning part was like, but it was good. I liked it. Um, alrighty. Would you rather? We've got a couple, a couple of good ones lined up for today. Let's burn through a couple of these. Let's do two. Unfortunately, we'll have to do two next week. We won't talk nearly as much. Um. Would you rather get a lifetime supply? Anyway, so this is including everything from Target or Walmart. You can pick what, either he... Target or Walmart and you get a lifetime supply of everything there for free. So you basically get to do all your shopping Walmart. at one of those star- stores. Walmart? Target. Target. <laughs> I don't know if I have an opinion. Um, I would probably pick. Hmm. I'm curious if Walmart actually has a great low prices that they claim versus Target because I don't actually ever go shopping, so I don't. I don't know which one actually has the better prices. But the idea is always that Walmart has lower prices. I'm not really concerned about value of things, but like, there's some sketchy WalMarts. That's true. That is true. I've yet like to see. The Walmart, uh, I'd rather go to the Target. Target. A little bit farther than the Walmart down the street. Uh, yeah, if there it's was free. there was a guy. People are going to take advantage of you getting free stuff. They're like, oh, he's going to be loaded up. Yeah, so we'll we'll hope that. Uh... And then they're like, let's get him to buy me groceries. <laughs> free. Yeah, I'll do it. Like, I'll do whatever. No. Just don't kill me and take my wallet, please. Um, all right, uh, Target it is. I'll pick Target as well. Um, hmm, interesting. Sixty-three thousand people. Fifty-one uh, percent said that they would rather go to tar- have a lifetime supply to Target. Um, 49% said Walmart. <laughs> a little bit more split down the middle than I expected. Alright. Um, let's see. I got one. Okay. If you had one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted, <laughs> would you rather capture it or let it slip? 
to seize everything <laughs> I've ever wanted. Would I? Do you get the reference? It's the opening to that an Eminem song. Yeah, uh, okay. lose yourself. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess capture it. I would say capture it. I think we all would say capture it. (laughs) All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, That was not much of a serious one. Last one. I just just thought it was clever. It was. I, I, as you heard, I was like hearing the rest of the, uh, (laughs) hearing the rest of the song play out in my head. Um, would you rather fight Chuck Norris or Mike Tyson? Uh... The real question would be, would you rather lose your ear or not? And then whichever <laughs> one you choose. Chuck Norris. I want to fight Chuck Norris. <laughs> um, fight I, Chuck. I feel like Chuck Norris would just round head, roundhouse kick me to the face and then I'd be done. Mike Tyson would probably just like beat on me till I just... Um, I don't know though. Mike Tyson's got the crazy factor. I mean, I've seen that dude. He is volatile. Like he is ready to just kind of explode when he has to so I'm gonna say I'd rather oh. fight Chuck Norris well that's what I said I'd rather fight oh, Chuck Norris okay. cause I feel like Mike Tyson would just kinda just like okay, yeah. we, we, he'd we, hit we, me yeah. then he'd just keep hitting me <laughs> or Chuck Norris would be like he's like yeah this is, just kicked you in the face and now you're down this is incredible um, 52,000 people voted straight I think this is a first 50-50 there is not one. Oh. There's not one or the other. I'm sure there is. I have just no by a couple strong points. feelings one way or the other. <laughs> oh, the, the neutral, neutral, whatever's. Oh, I can't even remember the name <laughs> from Futurama. That's a great yeah. episode. That's a great episode. Um, alrighty. Well, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head to a break. Uh, we're about. Oh, we're not doing bad. We're about seven minutes behind. Uh, we're gonna head to a break right now and uh, play our first song. In which case, we'll come back and we'll have a really good discussion with Ross um, about mm-hmm. some. Got some great, uh, great stuff. Give me a moment here. Setting things up. Da, 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 da. Da, da. All right, here we go. Kill the jazz. There we go. Jazz killed. This is, all right, so I wanted to pick something a little interesting today. Um, this is Marwood Williams. Um, he almost has kind of a uh, Neil Young sound to him without getting super falsetto like Neil Young does. But this is Marwood Williams with the song I Will Disappoint You. It's from the album Eyes Once Shut. Um, it's good. It's kind of a folky uh, folky mm-hmm. tune. We'll play this when we come back. We've got Carmified and Ross um, and a potentially very um, also very volatile uh, thing going on. Um, I'll, I'll wait to introduce it though. So here we go. Uh, we will see you on the other side. <laughs> Why you wait for me to anoint you? I haven't got a clue what I'm supposed to do, and there's no direction I can point you. I Construct of your confusion, desperate to believe what you hope to be, but it only led to confusion. I Expect 
temptations, they sometimes burn you, and they spurn the moves you make. So walk away from your conclusions and your illusions. Soon will fade. Take me as I am I'm doing what I can And just like you I am broken I'm trying to make a stand In my house of sand And my eyes once shut Now are open I I really like that theme. Are you still muted? Are you still muted, Tony? Am I? No. Oh, okay. I'm not. oh. <laughs> it's doing a pretty good, uh, pretty believable. I've been tr- uh, miming. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I was muted. I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention at the top of the show, I'm a freaking idiot. I don't know if Michael's still listening, but my buddy Michael, who I do work with, um, he is doing what he, I guess he can, calls hosting the show for us today. So um, basically, he sort of like forwards his, our stream, or rather his stream, to connect with ours. So if people log into his page right now, they're actually watching our show. Um, and so, uh, I wanted to say thank you very much. Um, I actually was supposed to get him an image, I think, to, um, help promote and a little brief summary of the show, but I did not do it because I forgot. (laughs) So I apologize. Um, but I want to say thank you, Michael, for helping us out. Um, Michael's been a good supporter of the show. I've got a couple friends at work. Um, Michael is one of the few that, uh, um, actually sits down. I'm pretty sure he's listening to every show and, uh, is always offering feedback and all that kind of good stuff. And the other day he was like, have you ever heard about hosting? And then told us about it. And I was like, awesome, cool. That's very nice of you. And we always appreciate any kind of help we can get. So thank you. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and call Ross onto the show while I do this little dance to try and get our freaking video feed to match up now. Here we go. Adding to the Well, I'll still be able to do this and. Wait, let's get one last high five in before right, we end the show. Go. One, wait, oh, one, two, three, go. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Now okay. you can rearrange the windows. Now he's now he's coming in. Uh, let's play a theme for this guy, and it's going to sound a little bit like this. Ross is, you know, distinguished. Got his big old beard. <laughs> it's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it. There's amazing things going on every day. I may not be good, but I'm expensive. <laughs> it's Ross and I, and then a bunch of women. Don't let society tell you what to do. He has the power. Brody. Ross Bays. Is, is he muted now? Are you muted, Ross? You... I better not be muted. Oh, he's not now. So he, well, he was mouthing Brony. Oh. Was he? <laughs> That's impressive. It's impressive. You guys are getting me good today. Um, all righty. Well, welcome, That's to, what you do. welcome to the, the show. Same thing. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, 
Welcome. Welcome to the show, Ross. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm feeling pretty good on this tasty Saturday. Uh, yeah, you know, the weather's been a little uh, fluctuational. I don't know if that's a word. It is now. It is um, now. It, uh, it was like freaking... Everything's a word if you say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, like 85. Like and swag. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's like 86 this week. Like really hot, especially working in a warehouse. And then last night it got uh, – yesterday actually got a lot cooler. And by a lot, it was probably like 76, but it felt so much better because <laughs> it had been in the 80s the, the day prior. I have no idea what the – see what the temperature says it is right now. Looking around 75, maybe a high of 84. Um, wow. So it looks like it will still be a little warm today. But um, we're here though. We're uh, We're not queer. Um, not that that matters, <laughs> but <laughs> don't, you don't have to get used to it. Um, you have an interesting topic for us here today. Um, and I hope that it is a little more, uh, organized than my dumb rant that I had <laughs> this the, at the top of the show about freaking Joss Whedon. Cause I realized no, I thought it was great after I talked about that, that I realized after I mentioned it, that it was not something I could bring up briefly and talk about. Which is what I <laughs> yeah. wanted to do. I wanted to be like, oh, yeah, so Joss Whedon did this and he's not a sexist. And I realized that I couldn't do it without being like, well, to tell you B, I have to now explain A. And then it just got out of hand. So, uh, But you have something uh, much more organized and ready for us. Um, tell me, Ross, well, what you've like got that. for us today. Well, uh, well, the first thing that I want to do is before I get into the actual topic, mm-hmm. I want to extend this question to Anthony. <laughs> To Are me? you ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> to me? Uh, stretch it out. All right. So, Tony, your first question. In your opinion, and you don't have to give any big description, but just yes Sorry. and no. In your opinion, do you think that of the two sexes, women are the weaker sex? Well, was, like talking physically? Physically. <laughs> physically, yes. Okay. <laughs> and there are way more stronger men than there are stronger women. Okay, physically. And Jacob, I don't. Know, is it is Jake short for Jacob? It is. It Jacoby? is. Um, okay. No, uh, did Jacob. I tell you? Did I tell you? I don't know if I told the story to you guys or not about Jacob. Did I tell you about that? Oh, no, Jake. There's a there's a girl. <laughs> I can't remember why I tell my stories if it's like at lunch because like at lunch I do like a mini podcast. I'm like trying to like entertain. So I'm like, oh, yeah. So then today and um, no, but um, there was a girl that I had in like first grade that thought my name ended with a P. And so she said they were tra- telling him how to like spell out my name. Or someone was like, oh, does anyone know how to spell Jacob? And she was like, ah, yes, J-A-C-U-P. And she thought my name was Jacob. That was my. <laughs> that, that's that's really the end of the story. But um, <laughs> do I think do I think women are, are the weaker sex? If we're talking about, it's such a. Oh, I'm like afraid to say it, and I shouldn't be afraid to say it. It's like I said. It's like with the racism thing. Like no matter what you say, someone can always be like, "Oh, you hate women." Um, on average. <laughs> I'm going to say that it appears that <laughs> you should run for office. <laughs> I'm afraid, I'm afraid I have to no say it. strong feelings one way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was. Uh, never mind. I'm, I, uh, yes, you know what? I, I think that if we're just, like I said, if we're going by averages and we're talking about physical. Physical strength. <laughs> then yes, it, I would think that women have less. I def, I don't know. I give up. That's it. You, you know what I'm going to say. So that's all. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Jacob, 2016. <laughs> I am not a crook. I promise. <laughs> all right. So, do you guys think that they are less capable than men? Maybe they're physically weaker, but are they less capable than men of physical acts? I, on that what? On, on that part I would say no. Like here's what I mean. Let's say you take um let's say you take a man that's 130 pounds and you take a woman that's 130 pounds and they both have a goal of doing 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups and 25 pull-ups in 5 minutes. 
are they both just as capable of pulling off that goal? Are we assuming that they're both in the exact same physical condition as far as exact same condition? I would assume that they both are capable then. That's that would be my my okay. uh assumption. Okay. I mean there's things like like testosterone, which like help males build up muscle mass and like strength and stuff. Like it's way easier for a dude to build up strength than it is for a woman. Like there's just biology. Hmm. Okay. There's no like so I mean, yeah, but if they're both in the same physical fitness level, then right, yeah, right, right. they're both equally able to do it. But if they're like reaching for a goal, like a guy could hit like could progress faster in the weight room when it comes to pure physical strength wise. Okay. Than a woman can. That's a good point, at least because of testosterone. Like, yeah, right. and yeah, our body releases stuff that helps them build muscle mass faster okay. than a woman. All right. So then that brings me to the question, and here is the the headline for Karmify today: When is it okay to hit a woman? <laughs> <laughs> um. Is okay. So is that is that um, rhetorical, or are we actually asking? Well, I mean, I, I'm going to say, do you guys feel like there is an appropriate time to hit a woman? I do think so. And, and everyone's okay. like, oh, my God. Um, no, the only time I would say that I would be absolutely ready to hit a woman is if she is about to kill me. If she's got a gun, if she's got a knife. Now, I'm not saying that I would Mike Tyson her or no better. What was the who was the guy? You're off. Who was the guy that we talked about last week to beat women? Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, so sorry. That's probably not a very good joke. But not saying that I would do that. But if my life is in danger, or let's say another person is in danger. Actually, I had this discussion with somebody once, and they said, uh, what would you do if you saw another woman go up and start beating the crap out of Rachel? And, you know, or like, you know, or like just going at it and pushing them off and stuff like that wouldn't, wouldn't handle or wouldn't, wouldn't deter her. You know, the whole like, please, you know, get off. Don't do that. And she just started going to town, hitting Rachel. What would you do if you had to, if the only thing that would stop her from attacking Rachel would be to hit her in the face, would you do it? And I would, I would, because at that point I'm, it's like a, for the greater good thing. I would, I would, I would do what I had to, to prevent somebody else from getting hurt. If Have no fear. I would hit that woman. <laughs> <laughs> that is a t-shirt. Have Straight no fear. <laughs> um, so I would you know that woman down. <laughs> there, but, the, but these are very. I feel like these are very rare in specific circumstances, and so that's why I'm saying that it's not something that you know you would say. Ah, oh, that woman shoved me in the chest, so I decked her. You know, it would be like no, she was going to cut my throat, or she was going to do this, or she was going to hurt that person really badly. And, you know, obviously there's varying degrees. If, if, like I said, if pulling them off, if doing something like that is going to do it, then do that. Don't punch them. But if, like, that's your option, it doesn't matter anymore. If you're facing someone that, that is, like I said, if, if the danger level is that high that a punch is what's necessary, that is what is necessary. No matter the sex. It doesn't matter about the sex at that point. That is something that you do to prevent further uh, harm from being from happening in that situation. I feel like that is the only way, the only situation in which hitting a woman would be okay. And at that point, like I said, I feel like the gender ceases to matter. At that point, you are no longer hitting a woman. You are hitting an attacker and you are stopping them from further damaging whatever it is that's going on. And as long as you don't say, I'm going to enjoy this, sweetheart, (laughs) (laughs) should be all right. Yeah, yeah. You just, yeah. (laughs) Don't show any joy while it's happening. And uh, you should be in the clear. All right, so what about you, Tony? Are you in the same boat that Jacob is in? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, obviously I would resort to not hitting some. Like, I mean, with sure. anybody, I resort to not hitting someone. Like, I've gotten in fights, and I've never thrown a punch. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can, I guess, fit, like, there's ways to subdue people and dominate people without actually striking them. Right. Right. So obviously I would do my best to not strike anybody, but if it came down to it and I felt it was needed. Yeah. Okay. I mean, person is a person, but if that person was a woman, I would guarantee I'm just for my own safekeeping. I would have my phone out recording what was going on. (laughs) (laughs) It's like this, like body cameras for everybody. Yeah, I mean, because 
I got a link pulled up. I was going to, you may have seen it already, but I'll send it to you guys afterwards. Um, like a, the Cardinals cheerleader, um, called the cops on her boyfriend saying he, he was like beating on her and like was going to like the cops were about to arrest him and probably haul him off to jail. And, but he had it recorded and none of that happened. Wow. She was hitting him. Hmm. So wow. I wish you had sent me that because that is exactly the direction that I'm headed today. So if you can find that, pull that up. Um, But so that kind of brings the question in terms of men versus women, physicality. You know, is it ever okay to hit a woman? And I've been in the boat and I know a lot of people are in the boat that say, no, it's never okay to hit a woman. However, let's look at this from a couple angles. First of all, we have the feminist movement. And everybody, as soon as you see feminists, you're like, oh, here we go. <laughs> Just like at the and pre-show, you guys were like, feminists? Oh, here, here oh, we go. Oh, yeah. like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, man, this is going to be heavy. But um, if we look at feminists, like Mary Shear uh, back in 1986 said, feminism is the radical notion that women are people, which was kind of one of the big sparks for gender equality and, and you know, things like that. So... We look at gender equality to say that women should be treated the same as men. So if we're at a bar and some dude gets up in our grill and starts calling us bae and saying we got all this swag, if I'm going to crack him in the mouth, why wouldn't I do the same to women? Because that's gender equality, right? right? I mean, is that is that the same boat? Well, or is uh, it not? If you, uh, I, I mean, I guess that's where the, the sort of double-edged thing happens and it actually – I mean, a lot of that can actually tie into any kind of equality debate, whether it's like racism or whatever. Is that um, – because I mean I believe one of the big things for a while was um, women sort of like getting the equal rights. Well, then does that mean that they can also be drafted for war? And they're like, well, no, we right. don't want that to happen. Well, then it's not truly equal because you know, like at, at least when the draft was, was a thing, it's like that's what you did to all men. So if you want women to equal men – then everyone can be drafted. Like, and right. it was like, well, we don't want, we don't want the, we don't want that to happen. So I guess we're not going to not be completely equal, but um, yeah, it definitely seems like the equality thing is, is not on that level. It's not on the level of if I'm going, if I would punch a man in this situation, <laughs> would I also punch a woman? If I would, right. you know, do this in that situation, it's more of like bringing them up to the bar of expectation for, I guess like jobs and stuff like that. But um it is an interesting dissection to say, well, if you truly, if we're tr- if we're talking about true equality, whether it's race or f- feminism or whatever, does that mean then that everyone is fair game? You know, right. like the and that I, there's, I don't know if there's a good answer for that, to be honest. Well, some people say that if you are adult enough, not man enough, if you are adult enough to throw a punch, you're adult enough to receive a punch. Hmm. You know, that's one way to look at it. Like if you're going, if, if I have a woman that comes and attacks me, she is saying, let's rumble. So I'm going to, ah, right. let's rumble. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. That's how I said, <laughs> come on, brother. Yeah. You ain't going so, nowhere. Uh, that's I got five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I rip off my pants and I tear my tank top off. <laughs> All right, so let me give you some stats to kind of put this into perspective. Um, so first of all, on a legislative angle, a new study by Sonia Starr, who is an assistant law professor at the University of Michigan, found that men are given sentences that are 63% longer on average than their female counterparts when convicted of the same crimes in federal court. So if we look at domestic violence, for example, if a – and there are women that are charged with domestic violence. We're talking physical abuse. Um, their sentences are 63% shorter than those of a man um, for the same crimes. And let me show you the let me show you the post that, and I'm just going to use my webcam here because I'm cheap and lazy. I want to show you the post that started this whole avalanche of this topic. Okay, let's see here. So. A woman can do anything a man can do. And if you look closely at the picture behind the text, you'll see this guy has been beaten to a pulp. And that was from his uh, girlfriend. That was from Hmm. his girlfriend. And he refused no matter what to strike her back. And he was beaten pretty, pretty badly. Pretty, pretty awful. And, um, and so the fact of the matter is that domestic violence does happen in the same 
Not in the same ratio. I can't say that. But it does happen in the same sense to men as it happens to women. So, for instance, 28, 28.5% of men in the United States have experienced rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. 28% of men. Now, of course, you think, stalking, that's got to be the majority right. of that percentage, <laughs> right? Um, more than 830,000 men fall victim to domestic violence every year. And a man is a victim of a domestic abuse every 38 seconds in America. Hmm. So here's, here's what's rough about this. Like you look at it and you can say, okay, well, 28% of men in the United States have experienced these things. But you can't take that 28% and say, oh, well, it's only 28%. The other 72% are women. It's not the case because, because men are the way we are. We are afraid to report it which means that these numbers are incredibly low because nobody wants to say, hey, I got kicked in the teeth by my girlfriend. Right. And because that, you know, it's a big blow to our pride and everything else. Hmm. So it does happen uh, is the case. And uh, in this study that I'm talking about, they studied 18,761 relationships and found that 24% of them were violent. And of the 24, 24% that were violent, half – had been reciprocal, which means that there was violence inflicted by both people. So whether it's feminism and the fact that women are just as strong as men or uh, whatever the case might be, it comes down to are we willing to hit women? And if so, when? Like, you, Jake, you brought up the, the idea that if she has a knife or if I feel my life is in danger, I'm going to punch her in the mouth and it's going to be great. <laughs> right. But, no, so, I mean – because – and Rachel – Rachel and I rarely even verbally fight, like almost never. So I, I, not that she would be capable of this. Not not she wouldn't be capable. Not that she would do this is what I'm saying. Um, But, it, you know, if she's coming at me and she's trying to hit me and she's trying to whatever, I mean hitting her would not be the first thing that comes to my mind at all. Might push her back, whatever, right. you know. Like not push her back as in like, ah, boom. But, but like push her back as in like get off me. Get off, you know, like get back. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, I feel like the danger really has to be there because like Tony said, my first instinct isn't going to be to hit something the very first time it attacks me, even with a dude more so maybe with a guy, it, my instinct will be to hit them because I don't have to worry about legal issues as much <laughs> with hitting a dude. <laughs> that is the only reason. Um, but you know, if, if my first instinct is just going to be to extract myself from the situation get the door between us get out you know like move and whatever but if it's so bad that i have no other option like i said you know with the knife or the gun or the whatever which like i said is probably kind of rare um there's the only situation i can think where i would have no problem saying yes i hit that woman well why'd you do it because she was going to stab me in the heart or you know or because she was going to shoot me in the head and i don't feel like those are refutable i don't feel like if a woman was to come up and tell me, well, you're still wrong, I would be like, are you effing kidding me? Why? Why would I be wrong in those scenarios? And that's the only reason I believe that is because I, I believe those to be true for anyone. I, I feel like anyone would agree with those situations that if you were put in a position where it was your life or punching a woman, I would punch a woman to live. I would do it if I, if I had to. Um, <laughs> um but only, but only in the direst of the direst, the most dire, whatever of circumstances. Um, you know, it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be something to do lightly. Um, not by any means, but for anybody, it wouldn't be something I would do lightly for anybody. Because I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's serious stuff. You you hit somebody hard enough in the face, and they're gonna have to worry about you know facial surgery and stuff like that. And it's, I mean, it's like it's not something you should lightly be throwing around. No pun intended. Whether it's a man or a female. Um, yeah. You know, throwing fish should not be the first the first thing to do. So, Tony, you down for hitting some women? If it came down to it, <laughs> like given the I mean, opportunity, I've been, like I've been at, I went to a bar a few months ago because there's a band playing that I was enjoying, and like I was driving, so I wasn't drinking at all. And I go to the bathroom, and this guy starts like dancing, trying to like being drunk and stupid, and starts like dancing on me, and I'm like. Please get out of here. I just like shove him off and cheap trying to go to the bathroom. This dude, I don't know what it was. Probably could, like he was a small dude. He's like, I had easily four inches on him. 
and easily 40 oh, pounds. Height wise. Okay. Height wise. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but, like, straight up assaulted me. Wow. Like, he, like, he starts grabbing me by the throat. And one, he didn't what? grab me. Yeah, for pushing him off him because he was trying to dance on me. You're not going to dance on me, Tony. So he, I'll show you four me. inches. Like, he grabs me by the throat. <laughs> And not, like, not even around the throw. He like, tries to grab my trachea, oh, which what? one is doing nothing. <laughs> right. And then some's like, is this happening? Out of place. So, like, I didn't, I, at that point, all I had done is, like, push him off me because he was, he was grinding on me. Wow. And then, like so, like, percent. apparently, and then, so he's grabbing me by the throat, and, like, I walk him into a corner. I was like, is this, is this about to happen? So, like, his back hits the wall. And he, like, his eyes go wide, so he lets go, and he swings, and he punches me in the head. What? Then I'm like, is, I was like, really, dude, it's, you are, like, I am restraining myself <laughs> fairly well right now, because you're just, like, a tiny little dude, and I really don't want to get kicked out of this bar and or leave you in a hospital. Right. Like, I just don't want to deal with this, like, just go. And yeah. then he, like, his buddy, like, interjects, is like, hey. Calm down. He's drunk. Like you don't want to do this. I was like, I've done nothing. <laughs> like your your friend is like got upset that I rejected his dancing on me That's and has now assaulted me. And as I'm talking to his friend, he kicks me in the nuts. What? I was like, <sighs> like if I can restrain myself that much and still not hit this dude, I think like, <laughs> it would take a lot to get me to hit a woman. I think this whole story is just proof that you are a, a superhero. Because, <laughs> like, you never hit the guy. You're standing there talking to his buddies, and this guy is kicking you in the nuts, and you're like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I was like, superhero. I, the guy was like, what, what are you going to do about it? I was like, honestly, I have to go to the bathroom, so I'm going to go take a leak. <laughs> but if he's still back, if he's, like, if he's still trying to get at me when I come back, we will take this outside. I was like, right. you've had your three strikes. Like, Grab me by the throat, punch me in the head, and then kick me. Like, yeah, this is going to go down. This is gonna go down. I don't know if I could have held like, that long. So then I go to the bathroom and I come out, and this dude is just like asleep, standing up. <laughs> what? You no, know, just like hanging his head. And I was like, "What is your problem, man?" He's like, I, "I don't know. I'm sorry." I was like, "Do you just do that to people?" And he's like, "No." He was like, "Man, honestly." You're lucky that I'm not drinking tonight because, like, this, I don't know how a not sober me would have handled right, that. Right, right. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm not drinking. I was, like, I was like, so you're telling me wow. sober you <laughs> tries to dance on other men, gets rejected. So then he grabs him by the throat. And when that doesn't work, you, get, you hit him in the head. And when they still don't want to dance with you, you kick him in the nuts. <laughs> I was like, stick with your drunk, because otherwise you are just an awful, awful human being. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to go back with my friends, and you're going to stay in this corner of the bar, and I'm not going to see you anymore. Got it? And then you pulled out your cape. <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, I want to enjoy you myself. Away. I don't want to get kicked out of this bar. Stay away. Wow. And he did. So Does if the guy had been bigger, would, would anything have changed? Probably if he not. had grabbed you from the throat, would you have attacked him back? Bigger guy. Probably not. Okay. I would have done this probably if, if I felt like actually like this guy could actually cause damage. This Like the dude hit me in the head. I didn't know what it was. At first. <laughs> Somebody threw a plastic cup like, at you. I was like, what is that? Wow. Like, but I mean, it's like I didn't feel like. I was in any sort of danger at that point. Yeah, yeah. If it had been a bigger dude and I was like, wow, this dude actually wants to cause me phys- – this guy can physically cause me harm, then maybe it would have – I don't know. It would have – I don't know. It, who knows? Wow. We'll but yeah, know. if – I think I could handle being hit by women for a while. Yeah. And, but but then it, yeah, it is the – I got hit by a woman. Do I tell people this? <laughs> See, exactly. And that's it's, – it's absolutely yeah. the case. You know, but it's like, I mean, where, where do we draw the line as men? You know, like if we're if we're re- really analyzing this, at what point do we get hit by a woman and then we refrain and then we're like, 
I want to treat you as equal. <laughs> <laughs> this you one's for feminism. Fair, fair. A bouge. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the greater good, I guess. Oh, man. I apologize to all of our female listeners today. I really do. This is a very very male-heavy, very uh, butt of the show for women. But, um, you know, it just you goes know, to show you. I- Go ahead. I will say, though, just real quick, and I was kind of hoping that certain people would be on the chat today that couldn't make yeah, it. Yeah, where I are you, Sarah? See. I know. So I wanted to see what the – what the opinions of the audience were going to be because so far the, the females that I have talked to, the, the, usually the response first and foremost is, no, you shouldn't hit a woman, but you shouldn't also hit a man. But if a woman attacks you, hit them back. That's <laughs> women saying that. And I'm like, yeah. all right, would you put this in writing for me? <laughs> yeah, can I have back? this? So when the cop shows up, I can just be like, no, yeah. bro, my girlfriend said it's cool. <laughs> Signed, mom. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's funny. Um, well, I suppose that's 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 good. Uh, it's that, good. Well, no, that at least we're on the same page, and it's not seen as like, right? You know. And I, I, like I said, I think both sexes would probably agree that if the situation was bad enough, chances are it won't get there. But for some people, it does. And if it was bad enough, it should be okay. And like I said, at that point, I feel like I, I stop seeing the person as being a gender anyways because at that point it doesn't matter what they are they're going they're just a punching they're bag going to hurt you right for jake mercer yeah <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> jacob so... <laughs> oh boy um <laughs> all righty well uh <laughs> thank you thank you for bringing that on for us ross day i wanted i thought it was going to be a good topic and um we've i was something i not that i've been waiting to discuss but i think it's something that doesn't get discussed a lot you know kind of like in a joking manner a lot of times we've joked a lot about it today but it, it, it's a sort of a serious thing to to examine you know i mean because it um it's not an easy i mean look at us at the top of the at the top of the, the show or at the top of the segment when we we're trying to answer it it's not an easy thing to say would you hit a woman because it's so taboo it's so taboo right but but you know but maybe there are circumstances where it comes up and it's actually um Something that needs that <laughs> that sounds so stupid, sounds so mean. Something that needs to be done, but then it doesn't matter. Like I said, if they're a man or a woman, because at that point they're just attacking you and you're you're in trouble. Um, so yeah. only as a, a last resort. Um, thank you for bringing that to the show. Uh, next week, pick something that's is allows me to provide less jokes about women, so that I look less better. Less jokes about okay, got it. So we can <laughs> I want jokes and not I need, be need to redeem expensive. myself. Let's make fun of uh, men next week. Um, all right. Well, thank, you, thank you for coming on the show, Ross. We will see you uh, sometime soon. Have a great weekend. See you, fellas. Goodbye. I'm pointing at the camera. He's gone. In the call. You missed it. Let's remove him. All right. There you go. Um, we're not we there yet. We're not there yet. Hold on. Let me. On. I don't know if, we're, if this is going to get readjusted or not. We've got you on. Uh... Hold on. Trying it now. Da, 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 da. Oops. All right. Well, that's the end of our show, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I'm just time talking a little bit while I reset these up. Yeah, this got a little messed up. With tool. Um, thank you for listening in and uh, chime in today, at least on the show, um, on Facebook or on um the website or even a private message. Let us know what you thought about uh, today's karma fight or anything like that. Give us some feedback on whether or not you've hit any women and what you did it for. No, don't do that. <laughs> um, if you want to find out how, how you can help out the show, just listen to me talk for the next five seconds. Uh, tell your friends about the show and share the media posts on Facebook. If you see us on Twitter, on Facebook, post them about the show. Just click share, type in. Oh, five great, seconds. Great show. Oh, damn it. All That's right, it. Well, oh, and I cursed. Up. Dang it. <laughs> uh, if you want to figure out how to sponsor a segment... Uh, you can find out more on our website. If you want to support us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash stream the machine. There you become a, there you can become a supporter. You don't even have to donate any money. Just hit support. And, um, it's easy as hitting like on Facebook. That's absolutely true. We have not gained any likes in a while, and that's completely fine because we've already got quite a few. It's something like 80. But um, – we need to have there's a there's a milestone mark for 100. We need 20 more people, all right? So try and get listeners, try and get 20 more people to like the show. Don't just say 
yeah, I know this guy. Uh, go to his page and hit like. You know, say hey. I should you probably know like the page. <laughs> <laughs> Just send it to him and say hey. You know what? Um, I don't know if you've ever listened to podcasts, but check this one out. See what you think, and if you like it. Put, do a like on the page helps everybody out um email in your music um we've got one more from marwood williams today good guy but um we want to have uh, more uh, sort of personally known songs on the show i always love to do that i always like uh like last week having casey's music um you can find me at redefine jack uh on twitter you can find tony at tony de palma 51 you can find the show at stm podcast we'll tell you when we're going live uh, when the show is up, it will also tell you it's the only avenue right now that will automatically update when the YouTube show goes live. Um, if you want to find out more about the show or just listen to past episodes, you can go to www.streamthemachine.com. Check out our archive there and catch up if you have not heard everything. Um, I want to thank everyone for their help as usual. Tony, for being an awesome co-host. Uh, Ross, for being an awesome content to the show and making me look like a worse person than I really am. Um Next week, 10.30 uh, Eastern Time, 9.30 Central, we have episode 53. We will be back. We will have more um, more stuff to talk about. And, uh, gee, I don't know. That's about it. Our show's over. We actually went we went long, but then we cut it kind of short there. So, nice. Like, get everybody out on time. And I pro- You know what? Works. I'm just going to say it right now. I am really sorry for today's intro. I feel like we carried on a long time, and I apologize for being so wordy with a lot of the things I had to say. So <laughs> next week it shouldn't be nearly as bad because I don't have, like, our entire intro, half of it was explaining crap about the show. So uh, that won't have to be done next week. Uh, Marwood Williams. The song is called Naked. It is from Eyes Once Shut. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in live. Uh, Have a great weekend, Tony. You have a great weekend. Take it easy. Enjoy yourself. Will do. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, Marwood Williams, uh, we will see you (laughs) next week. Goodbye. Abstract portrait lit by bedroom light from my little box just across the way. With facing windows and open shades. Friday night we're both alone The city's calling But we're stuck at home You're a beacon of hope For my despair Why you vacuum the floor in your underwear And there's something I hope that you will do Respectfully I ask this of you Let me see you naked I just want to see you naked I'll do you no harm Do you no harm Just need a little help Riding out the storm 
Show me some time Show me some time Just a little peek If you don't mind Let me see you naked I just want to see you naked Such a brilliant clip.